Sriya Madhiharan from the National University of Singapore. And joining me are my colleagues, Huang, Malcolm, Clement, and Fusam. Today, the topic of our discussion would be renewable energy and its related storage. The talk is outlined as follows. First, we will highlight the importance of renewable energy. We will then move on in explaining the key message, which is the need for large-scale renewable energy storage systems. We will then highlight how our innovations can help in building green cities and finally provide conclusions. Let's begin with the video. This video will highlight the energy crisis that we are facing in this century. is very clear from this video. We are addicted to fossil fuels. This has resulted in the evolution of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. For the sake of convenience, we just moved from typewriters to computers. Is it not important that we move from this unclean technology to a cleaner renewable energy technology? I am sure you all will agree that it is high time for us to change to renewables like solar and wind. In fact, a recent case study conducted at Santa Barbara showed that 25% of the city's power demand could simply be met by three forms of renewable energy, namely wind, solar and wave. Now I ask you a question, what is it that stops us from going from 25 to 100%? Yes, it is the intermittency that stops us. As we all know, the sun does not shine all through the day and the wind does not blow continuously. This picture that you see here shows the variation in the power output of a wind turbine as a function of time. The demands are so dynamic that the supply must meet the demand. Let's look at it in simpler terms. We have solar energy during day. We simply harvest it and use it to light up our houses. But at night, there is no solar energy and we are bound to face a power outage. What can we do then? Simple. Harvest the solar energy, store it in a device like a battery and use it when there is no solar energy. This brings us to the topic of today's discussion, which is the need for large scale renewable energy storage devices. The moment I talk of the term batteries, the first thing that comes to your mind is a lithium ion battery, which we have so often seen in mobiles and laptops. Now, let me put a question to you. Can these lithium ion batteries be used to store renewable energy in a large scale? Well, probably not, because the scale of deployment of these batteries is massive. Imagine these batteries as big as this room. Then the cost of generation would be several millions of dollars, assuming every kilowatt to cost between 600 to 800. Secondly, lithium resources are confined to specific geographies, which could result in economic monopoly. Thirdly, the safety of lithium ion batteries is a matter of concern, especially if they are deployed at huge scale. So what do we need? All we need is a cost-effective and an affordable solution. What can we do then? Let's think creative. Let us assume we replace lithium-containing compounds with a sodium-containing compound and form a sodium ion battery instead of a lithium ion battery. Sodium, as we all know, is abundant in seawater and is available throughout the world. So the cost of sodium ion batteries for every kilowatt hour would come down only to 200 to 250, one third of the cost of lithium ion batteries. This principle shows how a sodium ion battery operates. During discharge, the sodium ions are removed from the anode, they travel through the electrolyte and reach the cathode. 
In the meantime, the electrons flow through the external circuit and power your load. What I want to share with you today is three key innovations and breakthroughs that we have made in this technology. The first innovation is that we have come up with a one production process which can be used for manufacturing nanostructured cathode and anode materials. In this process, the seeds of sodium containing compound along with the surfactant are dispersed in water and ethanol and the precipitates are simply burnt to obtain the nanostructured host. This patented process has three advantages. It is cost effective, ready for mass scalability and provides excellent control on the microstructural properties. The second innovation that I want to talk to you today is on extracting high performance from these batteries. Well, let me take this analogy. The tree is as good as the seed that you plant. The same way, the performance of the battery is as good as its electrode materials. We in our lab have nano-engineered sodium vanadium phosphate, a cathode material, which shows outstanding sodium storage properties. A flat operating voltage at 3.4 volts, a super long cycle life of 30,000 cycles for the very first time, and ultra fast charging in 90 seconds, with coulombic efficiency remaining very much close to 100. The third innovation that I want to talk to you today is in the field of binders. The state-of-the-art batteries today make use of PVDF and NMP as the binders. What we invented was replace this NMP with water. As such, the cost of the binder is reduced by a factor of 100. This binder costs $6 per kilogram, while the state-of-the-art batteries use binders which cost $600 per kilogram. NMP, as we all know, is also toxic to the nervous system, while our new water-based binders are eco-friendly. This invention has a direct impact in the field of batteries because for every one hour, nearly 200 liters of NMP is being used by the battery industry. As such, this will help in reducing the overall cost of the battery. Now, I'll let my friend Malcolm to continue with the rest of the discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay, so first of all, as a proof of concept, what we did was that we assembled a full cell that actually has a, a full cell with a cathode and an anode, test it and compare it against a commercial battery. As you can see, our full cell actually achieved a capacity that is three times as much as the commercial battery. Furthermore, our full cell also exhibits a flat voltage plateau as compared to the commercial one. And what this means is that it actually helps to allow the better utilization of the energy store. Now, let me elaborate more on the value proposition of our sodium ion batteries. Let's take for example, the lithium ion battery project in Southern California. The whole total project cost for this project is around USD 55 million. However, if you have to use sodium ion batteries, which is a factor of uh, lithium ion batteries, the whole project cost will be estimated to be around 31 million USD. So, this actually represents significant cost saving of 43%, and the lower capex will mean a shorter payback period and a higher rate of return. And this, in turn, we hope will actually spur more investment into green projects. For power utilities to adopt our sodium ion battery technology, first of all, the operating cost of battery must be equal to or less than the cost of generating energy. Based on our calculation, our battery requires to heat about 4,700 cycles to heat parity. Now, given that our battery actually has a long cycle life of more than 5,000 cycles, we believe that we will not only reduce costs, but also provide a feasible solution for load leveling for power facilities. Well, to conclude, our group believes that going green is the way going forward. And we believe that our proposed sodium ion batteries will actually help to support and encourage uh, large-scale usage of renewable projects. Furthermore, we have also developed an eco-friendly binder that could minimize cost, as well as showcase a uh, high-performing full cell that is actually competitive and as well outperform the common, existing commercial full cells. I think to quickly end off, uh, we have actually shown, uh, showcased you our uh, pilot line. Uh, okay, I'll just end off here, over here. Thank you for your attention. Um, can you go back to the, to the uh, cost comparison? Is that uh, 8 mil? Including, that's the uh, capital cost plus the uh, cycle life, divided by cycle life, right? Sorry. Wait. Sorry. Is it this one? 
slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, so basically what we did was that we took the, uh, we, we actually used the project that was actually ongoing. There this, this project was awarded by A123 in uh, USA. And we actually took, what we did was that we compared against another commercial uh, sodium ion battery by Aqua Energy, which is the only sodium ion battery in the market right now. So we took the cost, we actually factored in some uh, uh, possible uh, price fluctuation and, and then used that as a multiplier. Yeah, I think uh, the DTM ion energy is much higher than the 32 mil currently. Okay, um, basically this was, uh, this was actually an estimate, so we don't, know, we don't have a breakdown of the cost. What we want to do is that we want to actually have a breakdown of what, what was the different cost, but we couldn't have it, so we actually gave an estimate. Yeah, this, uh, we just want to, show, uh, to do this to showcase uh, where is the value uh, of using sodium ion batteries. Okay, I just follow the slides. Yeah. You, you compare with the lean uh, and iron and sodium iron. As you know, we have a lot of different chemical components in there. So I instead they use called the sodium iron. I think the use strength would be you utilize the V is very very thin. So that's the your strength. Okay. So I just uh, uh, emphasize as you previous uh, presentation you mentioned about you have a three strength. One is so called the narrow cathode. And also you have using the eco-friendly binder. binder. Okay. Can, can, can you elaborate more on that? Okay. Uh, what's the, you know, you call about the, right. the uh, eco-friendly binder? Yes. Okay. The major problem that we have in the battery industry today is we have three components basically. The electrode materials or the active materials, the conductive part of it which is the carbon, and the third one is the binder which uh, acts like a cement holding all these components together. In all the batteries that we see today, we have PVDF, which is a polymer, and NMP is used to dissolve this polymer. Uh, NMP is toxic to the nervous system. It is very pricely, that is, it costs $240 a liter. So the idea is to target this weakling where we could replace this NMP with water. So what we did was we took a plant extract and dissolved it in water. So this binder is totally water-based and organic. What happens is the moment you use water, the price of the battery is going to come down. And that's what we've showcased from two, uh, $600 for this binder, we've come down to nearly $6 a kilogram. Because the impact is every one hour, the battery industry cycles two liters of NMB for making 400 kilograms of slurry. So one can imagine using water would be a really wise decision as it would bring down the overall cost. And uh, the first question that you asked is on the process. Uh, we've made this uh, wet chemical process to make nanostructured cathode and anodes. And the biggest advantage is it's very uncomplicated. There are no pressure reactions. It's just basic wet chemistry. Um, for the uh, uh, for the energy storage for the and your grayscale applications, and then we always look for cheap solution. Yes. Okay. And there was a video from a TED from that MIT professor. Yes. Okay, doing that two megawatt right. storage. On How do you compare your solution to his solution? Okay, uh, I, I re recollect the talk, the TED talk that uh, the MIT professor gave. Uh, so this was basically melting metals. Melting metals is going to be energy intensive. Here there is no melting of metals. So that's, as a process, this is going to be much value add than melting metals. Okay, thank you. Thanks. The use of sodium ion batteries to support the use of large scale energy generating resources such as solar wind power. So, what we have prepared for you today is a three dimensional visual aid to help people uh, to understand easily how our battery can be used in the entire system. So, let me run through now. Firstly, Suppose we have a solar farm that can be placed in a far away uh, low-lying area, right? And then during the day, we can harvest the energy from the sun and have it transmit that. You don't have to say everything from the beginning. Okay. That's just do the questions. Sorry? Okay. Uh, I'll repeat again. Yeah. Okay. Answer questions. Okay. 
Okay, the cost of sodium and battery for every kilowatt hour is around 200 to 500 dollars. If you take it for lithium battery, it is around 800 dollars. This difference is because lithium has the starting material is very expensive. Sodium, we are trying to get it from the sea water. That's the first advantage. The second advantage is that this sodium ion battery shows record cycle life of 30,000 cycles, which has not been shown in the UK. This 30,000 cycles is nearly equivalent to a shelf life of 15 to 20 years, which cannot be achieved with the lithium ion battery. So, if you place a storage unit for your housing, it can last nearly for 15 to 20 years, which is not possible with the and the cost. And the most importantly, the third and the most superior for a sodium battery to be a commercial. Yes. Currently, there's no commercial. Because it's a very new direction. Sodium and battery is just starting to pick up. The first barrier is many electrode materials are not many The electrode materials which are stored so many are still not found. Lithium is very mature. But we've done the new practice material and anode materials which can store some energy. Because this data is not there in the literature. I believe that the people have searched for all kinds of materials like, for uh, batteries. Yes. Like, very long time. Yes. They have been. They have been. They have been. They have have been. They 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 have been. It will be lower than lithium and battery because the operating voltage is lower than lithium. But that barrier can be taken to an advantage where we can use them to power buildings, not electric vehicles. Because when you think of buildings, you have a lot of space and you're replacing it near a farm. So the volume is not a big concern. That may be the thing that's no impact. Which is very important. Okay. Specific energy. Yes. Thank you very much. How do you compare your specific energy with the lithium batteries? Okay, this uh, the specific energy will since sodium ions intercalate at 0 0.4 volts lower than lithium, the specific energy will be only 75 percent of the lithium. Say lithium today the state of the art is 180 to 200. These will be 75 percent. Thank you.